You could have saved me a few crumbs. Seriously, Kay? I just opened this bag. You saw me go into town at the Make Your Own Waffle slash Taco Bar. I'm still stuffed. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be waffles or tacos. Pass me your pencil. I need to change my schematic. Okay, seriously, can you at least not eat all the studio supplies? I really need to finish this. Huh? huh? Mice! Hey, Jax, any reason why you're up on the counter? No reason. I just like seeing this place from different viewpoints. It uh, helps me <laughs> understand my customers better. Which customers usually stand on the register? I am super curious. Is it the small, gray, furry customers with whiskers and tails? That look something like this? Fine, you got me. We've got a bit of a rodent problem at Stax. They terrify me, but I also don't want to hurt the little guys, so I can't call pest control. How could I ever face Jennifer again? But if we don't get rid of them, this place could be shut down. That's not happening. We just need to wait and nicely and safely suggest to the mice that they find a new place to chill. Maybe sooner than later. I saw you eating that behind your notebook. Don't blame the poor mice, Reese. That's low. Don't worry, Jax. We're on it. Come on, Reese. Let's walk and talk and munch. <laughs> Jax is right. This really does give you a new perspective. Like, I can see now that despite all of my security measures, Edie is still sneaking into my room. I was saving that for binge-watching dog mechanics. You know that show is fake, right? Dogs can't fix engines. They just look cute using power tools. I'm ignoring that wildly hurtful comment. What are you finding out about building a better mousetrap? I've watched two mouse music videos, subscribed to a podcast about mice mitts, and downloaded a pattern to make mice-shaped mittens. The internet is a magical place. I'm thinking we'll need an actual magical place to help Jax out with his mouse trouble. You in? Always. Cammie and Dev have been working on this epic treehouse with a skate ramp that sounds terrifyingly awesome. Whoa, that is so cool. Looking good, Dev. I had no idea you can skate like that. True poets possess nerves of steel and ice in their veins. Bearing one's soul is far more dangerous than a silly loop-de-loop. -loop. So, what's going on in Kaylee Reese land? Stax is overrun with mice and they're eating everything in sight. And after they eat, well, those crackers, wires, and unfairly graded mat tests are digested and need to come out somewhere if you catch my drift. Ew. Gross. Miss Reese Easley, I was gate the highest loop to save you from all of that disgusting mouse poop. Just don't. Truly, Dev. We know how much you love animals, Cammy. Protecting their habitats and finding homes for strays. You're the perfect person to help us figure out how to get the mice to leave in the nicest way possible. That was one of my better motivational speeches, Kaylee. Can you not undermine it with whatever that is you're doing? Sorry, I have no idea what the... Whoa! Whoa. I forgot you're not used to paper animals coming alive. It's old newspaper to us. <laughs> Looks like the fearless poet skater has met his tiny, tiny match. I think Dev scared it away. You should bring him back to Stax so he can take care of your mice. Cammy, you are, as always, brilliant. Uh-uh. Nope. One world with a Dev in it is more than enough for me. I'm okay. Don't worry, Reese. Dev's staying put. But we need to get back and help Jax. I'll explain on the way. Phew. I was so relaxed and unafraid there. I think I fell asleep for a minute. Where'd Reese and Kaylee go? I thought we were gonna hit the half pipe. Sorry, Dev. I think you missed your chance. And I have to get home for dinner. Maybe you can skate with your new friend. <laughs> I made a new friend? And when I realized the mouse was hearing something that we couldn't? Dev's silent screech of terror. Exactly. And that's why Mr. Whiskers ran off. I did a little research. Some animals can hear sounds that our ears can't. 
if I can set this in the really high frequency range, like 30 or 40 kilohertz, we can annoy the rodents enough to drive them away. It has to work. I'm sick of sharing everything with these mice. I'm an only child. You know I can't roll with that. Speaking of annoying siblings, how's that anti-ED security system working out? Fantastic. Like I've been saying all these years, ED and rodents have a lot in common. Robots get such a bad rap in movies and books and stuff. Ours should be cute and friendly. No way. Cuddly robots are boring. Ours should be edgy. Or maybe before we figure out what this robot looks like, we should agree on what it actually does. The competition at this robotics event is gonna be fierce. How could we make our robot a breakout star? We still can't agree on anything. We think that kids and grown-ups with kids will love a robot that cleans your room. We'll win for sure. And we know that a robot that helps you pick out an outfit based on the weather will reduce the stress of getting ready for school, thus boosting academic performance. The judges will go crazy for it. If we don't have a decision by next week's meeting, we'll have to withdraw from the competition. Sorry, guys. Why are you so stubborn? <laughs> We need an impartial tiebreaker. I know where we can find one, or two. Your idea of a 30 alarm emergency is very different than ours. Clearly you've never dealt with robotics judge number four from the Clinton Charter School. Ugh. To be honest, the idea of trying to choose sides makes my stomach hurt. Ow! See? Don't worry. We know exactly who you need to talk to to settle this. Let's go. Whoa! Gets me every single time. Aha! These must be the visitors with the, what did you call it, Cammy? A mind-blowing, universe-changing problem? You totally sold it, girl. I'm proud. Yes, Professor Seymour. This is Kaylee and Reese. They're having a robot-related disagreement and need a tiebreaker. As Confetti's most awesome inventor, not just because you're my uncle, Dev and I thought you could help them decide what to do. Hopefully without it hurting your stomach. Ow! Professor Seymour, this place is amazing. Thank you so much for helping us. <gasps> shredders! How did you get one of Evil Queen Frivol's robot shredders? She never lets them out of her sight. I didn't get a shredder. I invented it. Queen Frivol took my delightful little invention and turned it into a paper-munching monster. When my daughters were little, they loved glitter. There was so much glitter. 20 years later, I'm still finding it everywhere. <laughs> I was making glitter from shiny metallic paper all the time, so I made this little guy to help me out. The girls named it the Glitterbot. One day, Queen Frivol came to the shop because her electric crown polisher was broken. She saw the girls using the glitter bot and begged for one to make party decorations. I never should have trusted her. Queen Frivol reprogrammed the robot's computer. Instead of making glitter, it went around shredding and destroying everything in the land of confetti. Then she figured out how to make her own shredders and built a bunch of biting bug-eyed bots to terrorize confetti. Perfectly said, Dev. I never imagined that the same robot could do happy, joyful things and mean, destructive things. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Deciding the fate of the universe. I mean, robots. So you and Queen Frivol had very different ideas about what you wanted the robot to do. And that one robot was programmed to do two different things. Well, one of them was pretty terrible, but still. But our one robot could do two different and awesome things. <laughs> Sounds like my tie-breaking skills are no longer needed. Phew! My stomach's feeling better already. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Guys, 
there's a way for us to make our robot so it does both of the things we want it to. Instead of focusing on the output, what the robot does, it's all about the information we give to it, the input. We just need to program it with the info it needs to make decisions. Like how to pick up different objects and where to put them. And what weather conditions match different types of clothes. Can you hand me that temperature sensor, please? Do you think the cloud bin's wide enough? We need to increase the angle so it opens enough to pick up bigger objects, like a dirty dish. <laughs> Not that I'd ever have those in my room, of course. Confetti's most irritating, oops, typo, Melvin, most incredible environmentalists. Welcome, ugh, Professor Seymour and Cammy. Mm, thanks. We're excited to show off this mini solar powered house. Imagine a world where we weren't bored to tears. Luckily, it's time for Queen on the Scene where I stump the simpletons, I mean citizens, of confetti with easy questions and they fail miserably. <laughs> Name? Dev? We've met before. Unlikely. Melvin will sing a very popular song and all you need to do is guess the title. Ready? Hit it, Melvin. Ugh, oh, it's my soon-to-be-released hit song getting flashy with my trashy. If it hasn't come out yet, how am I supposed to We know? win again! <sighs> Sorry, you were saying? Right. Solar panels turn light into electricity, which is a green energy. Oops, we're out of time. Well, that's it for me. And remember, stay trashy! <laughs> 